Star Wars Episode 1, Battle for Naboo, is an arcade-style action game co-developed by Factor 5 and LucasArts and a spiritual successor to Star Wars Rogue Squadron. The development team designed a new game engine to include land and water-based combat in addition to aerial combat. This is Captain Panaka. I am ordering all officers to clear the city at once. Do not engage the enemy except in self-defense. We don't want a war in our city. Because of this, the player can control various air, land and water vehicles, while each offers unique pros and cons during gameplay. Now, on my way, Captain. The game takes place during the events of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, as the player takes on the role of a lieutenant in Naboo's Royal Security Forces and fights the Trade Federation in 50 missions that take place on Naboo or in the space surrounding it. Depending on the level, the player can control several different vehicles like the Naboo N1 Starfighter, the Naboo Bomber, Trade Federation Gunboat and the Heavy Stab. The game initially restricts the player to a particular craft for each level, however, after a level is completed, it can be replayed with any available craft that falls within its air, land and watercraft specification. The player's performance is checked against four metal benchmarks after the completion of each level. Acquiring these medals promotes the player's rank and helps unlock hidden content. These will add three bonus levels and a couple of extra ships, including the Sith Infiltrator. Requesting permission to engage the enemy. Engage the enemy, Sykes. A TIE fighter and a playable model of a 1969 Buick Electra, based on a car owned by the game sound designer Rudolf Stember, can be unlocked via password only. We've been delayed. Put your speeders in gear. Things are getting pretty hot here. Battle for Naboo was released on Nintendo 64 in December 2000. Good work, people. We just put a Trade Federation base to sleep. We need to act fast. It won't be long before they replace this compact. A Windows port was released three months later. The Nintendo 64 version was heavily compared to Rogue Squadron and received generally positive reviews. Critics praised the game's tight and responsive controls but expressed dislike for the game's Episode 1 setting. The game's PC port was less well received, with critics citing poor visuals and difficult controls.